Hi there, welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Today's session is an any tier session. This can have any face you like, right? Let me explain. What we're gonna do is 30 one minute intervals with 15 seconds rest in between. Each of those intervals, you're gonna do at 20 strokes per minute. Now, your pace is dependent on how you feel that day, what you want to do. If you wanna do a recovery session, you're feeling tired, then back it right back down to 2K plus 18. Wouldn't go too much slower, but 2K plus 18 being a good recovery with a 15 second rest in between, it's not even gonna be as tough as a, two, as a 30 minute um, 2K plus 18 at 20 strokes a minute session, okay? Because it's gonna be a little bit easier. Or if you're looking for a real power session, you wanna really get out your legs, go for all of these 30 intervals at absolute maximum pressure from your legs. And by the time you get to the end of those 30 intervals, you're gonna be on the floor, done, okay? Or, this is how I tend to use it a lot, as a kind of a technique, how's everything feeling, do I wanna build through it session, where I'll start off a little bit slower, but then as I start to feel better and better, I'll progress and I'll go harder and harder. Um, so it's one of my favorite sessions. To be honest, it's actually one of the sessions I'll come to if I'm like, I don't know what I wanna to do today. I don't know if I even wanna row. I'll kind of sit down and go, right, I can face one minute at a time and I can just build it through the 30. And then before I know it, I'm done and I'm like, thank, Thankfully, I, I went for that session instead of going for something that I might have resented. So this, like I say, long, long intro here, but this can be anything that you want it to be. So I'll talk about more while we're going through it, about why it works and whatever, but I've gone on for so long. Let's just quickly get into a four minute warm up, and then we'll get into our main session. So as far as your machine, let's get that set up first. Do your drag factor. If you don't know about drag factor, please check out the video that I've got up here on YouTube. That'll explain what it is and round about where to set it. Put your monitor at eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down and set the foot straps so that they cover either the bottom lace on your shoe or they let you pivot nicely at the front if you're in socks like me. I think this probably goes down as one of my longest intros ever, doesn't it? But at least you've got that counter at the top that you could fast forward, or at least kind of go play me at double speed. So let's kick off into this warm up in three, two, one, go. So just 18 strokes a minute, nice and gentle. After all, we're warming up. We're not expecting to be instantly warm. So just give yourself a nice, four minutes to get into this. We'll do what we normally do, where we'll do two minutes of light rowing like this, and then we'll switch into some single leg, leg rowing for a minute, and then some arms only and some legs only rowing. So for this first minute, just row, don't worry. Just make sure you're body starts to move, you give your brain the thought that it's going to have to do a wee bit of work. And as we get into the next minute, start to think about the three key areas for your technique. So what's your back doing? Is your back going from a one o'clock to eleven o'clock? Are you making sure to drive from the legs, a good solid push of the machine rather than just pulling with your arms and are your arms nice and straight through the drive and then the recovery starts nice and quick with your arms once you've finished so just push those arms away just think about those three elements your back, your legs, and your arms. Although I've only given you 10 seconds to actually think about that now, so hopefully you were doing it with me. Right, so two more strokes. And then let's take one foot out of the strap, put it on the ground, and then continue to roll with just one leg in. Still think about your back, your leg, and your arms. Just because you've only got one leg in, doesn't mean you suddenly all fall apart. This should help you with your compression at the front. One more, swap legs. So as you get to the front of the machine, with only having one leg in, you should find it easier 
to get to the front. Nice shins at vertical. You don't have to lean too far like forwards and like stretch your back to get in. It should be able to be a nice compressed stroke into the front. One more stroke. Put both legs in, a little bend in the knees, and just use your back and your arms. Swing through those hips. Get the arms out, swing forwards. Arms out, swing forwards, swing back, arms in. Arms out, swing forwards. Arms out, swing forwards. Always rocking through the hips. Try not to just bend from the lower back. One more. And go to the front, straight arms, and just drive with the legs. Just feel about, feel as though you're just hitting that catch that you bite with the flywheel at the front, that you engage with it. Don't worry about how much power you're getting out of your legs. This one's more about that moment right at the front when you connect there. While maintaining a forward lean, hopefully. All right, that's our four minute warm up done. Have a wee drink, move up and down the rail, or slide up and down, don't move. And I'll explain once again what it is that we're gonna come and do today. All right then, so once again, we're gonna do 31 minute intervals with 15 seconds rest in between each of those intervals. Gonna be doing them at 20 strokes a minute. And that's the guidance I'm gonna give. It's now up to you for how hard you go. You can either go 2K plus 18 if you want it to be a nice recovery row. You can go kind of 2K plus 10 if you want it to be a mid-tier tough row. Or you can just go full guns, maximum pressure, just how fast you can get. So maybe like 2K plus eight, see if you can hold that for the 30 times. Just hit maximum exhaustion if you want to go for a top tier. Or you can just back right off, work on your technique, just make sure this gets you through, just make sure and focus, which is the good thing about the 15 second uh, rests in between, because that's when you get a chance to reset, rethink, and move into the next one. So that's why I use it that way from a technique point of view. Anyway, so it's your choice, 30 intervals, we'll just get through it together, um, and then you can let me know in the comment sections afterwards what you did, how you felt, and all that stuff. And we'll come up with a suitably hilarious hashtag at one point, I'm sure. All right. So here we go then, so we're going to start off, so remember it's 20 strokes a minute, so just one every three seconds, and it's your choice on your pace. You can even mix it up as you go through the session, but that might not be the best value in terms of a, a workout, so we'll talk a bit more about that during the session. So let's get ready to go in three, two, one, go. So I'm going to go for my just recovery. I just want to ease in from a technique point of view. So I'm at 2K plus 18. For my pace. Just because I want to see what's going on with my shoulder today. And if it starts to feel better, not too sore, I'll increase my pace as I go through the session. And then I might post the end result to the Facebook page. So here we go, three more strokes. All right, simple first minute. Shouldn't be particularly out of breath or anything, depending on how you've done that. We're on our next one in five, four, three, two, one. So hopefully you have decided what attack you're gonna have for this. Maybe you're doing the same as me, using it as a recovery, how does my body feel kind of session. Work on some, te some technique. Or maybe you're 2K plus five right now and absolutely killing it. It's your choice. Just 
stick to your plan for at least five intervals at a time. One more stroke. So what I mean is, if you're doing this as a recovery, recover for five intervals at the end of those five, decide if you want to change things up and go harder or not. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. So that 15 second rest is really a nothing rest. But like I say, what it does is it gives you a chance to just stop getting caught up in the fact that you're in a, uh, a constant row. So by stopping every minute, you can rest and reflect and not let any leaks in your technique creep in and stay there. So you might have a butt scoot that develops towards the end that if you concentrate when you start the next interval you'll hopefully get rid of it. One more stroke. So you, you now think, right, I was butt scooting then. Let's concentrate on hitting that catch at the front. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. So concentrate on that connection right there. Feet and hands connecting with each other so you don't have a butt scoot. Hopefully this is me fixing my butt scoot because I'm concentrating on it. Whereas if I was just doing a 30 minute constant row, I'd start to get caught up with how tired I was getting. I'd lose concentration. I might get fatigued glutes, which means I wouldn't want to. Whereas to hang on. Whereas by now having sorry, I keep shifting around this rest, I can kind of reset, control out, delete myself. And as I start the next one in five, four, three, two, one, go. I can think about right, so that connection with the catch, really focus on it. Because I'm now back to be able being able to focus. I don't have the rest of the gremlins that affects my concentration taking over. So I know my biggest problem is over leaning through my shoulders and lower back instead of my hip rock. So I'm going to try and concentrate on that next. Use my hip rock to be the thing that gets me forwards, not an overreach from my shoulders or slumping my back. So I'm going to do, start concentrating that on this one, see how it feels. Three, two, one, go. So really concentrate on powerful back. Trying to do my lean as I recover with my arms and then no more pivot to my back once I start the slide forwards. I still feel myself rounding at the front. The good thing is, is when I get it right, I can see the time 
on the monitor going down. My split time gets faster when I get the stroke right. There we go. Ow! Just bit my tongue. First time I've done that while talking to you. So I'm going to go through that again. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And then already, by working on elements of my technique like this, I started off at 2K plus 18, now by doing this on 2K plus 16. I'm not really thinking about laying in more power. I'm just concentrating on elements of my technique that I know need fixed. The question is whether this thing with my back is also solving my connection and butt scoot issues at the front. Last stroke here. 15 off again. Seven done already. It's not really even enough time to have a drink in between intervals, is there? Five, four, three, two, one. So if I wanted to, because it's only one minute at a time, I could probably spend all 30 intervals just focusing on my powerful back, or sorry, trying to keep a powerful back, and not rounding my shoulders at the front. And every minute I get a chance to stop take stock was I concentrating on the last interval or had I drifted and then I can start again and then if I feel uh, like I'm drifting too much mentally that is I can really try and focus Whereas you can't do that, well, it's harder to do that on a solid half hour row. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And the same goes no matter what pace you're rowing at, whether you're at the slower recovery pace, you should still be using this time to think about your technique or if you're going max pressure use those 15 seconds in between each to just reset your focus make sure your technique is as good as it can be Especially when you're at full pressure. Two strokes. Last one. When you're at full pressure at 20 strokes a minute, you want to have the best technique you can because that's when poor technique can cause injuries. Five, four, three, two, one, go. <sighs> After all, that's the main reason, the, like, the top reason you should have good technique is injury prevention. However, most people put their pace above injury prevention. So they'd much rather go faster now with dodgy technique than develop a technique that's safer on their body and then develop speed with that technique.
That said, I'm constantly working on mine. Three, two, partly because I know I don't have perfect technique, so I'm constantly chasing for those little power leaks, but five, four, three, two, one. And it must be said, I think I was at my fastest when I had quite a bad upper body grab. So instead of driving with the legs at the front, I'd come in and instantly, oh, be like, come on. I'd be tugging on the flywheel. Roar! That maximum drag factor and... And fair enough, I was... Consistently in the 640s for a 2K. Hang on. Three. Two. However... I was also consistently getting kind of stress factors in my ribs, tearing into costal muscles and keeping me off rowing for six weeks at a time. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Um, so when I first started, I was fast, but with poor technique, I was getting injured a lot. Should hold me off the machine for a while. Then I lowered the drag factor and tried to concentrate on at least having a bit more of a leg drive and forward lean. Take a bit of the percentage of power off my upper body and into my lower body. And funnily enough, it was with a technique like that that I got my PB. So, two. So, although with the poor technique, I was probably a bit more consistent with my times, when I get it right with this technique, I'm a lot faster. Four, three, two, one. And then. Eventually, just came down to my brain and just not wanting to put myself through a maximum effort. And that's what held me back for about a year. And then I'm sad to say, series of injuries, but I'm still held back. But it was self-inflicted injuries. Cut my hand really badly. Uh, came back too quickly. So got to tennis golfer's elbow. Uh, hang on. Three. Two. One. Then I went and had a surgery that men of my age tend to go. When they don't want any more kids. That kept me off for a while. Five, four, three, two, one. Go and keep up with me on the stroke rate. And then after that surgery, again, tried to come back at full power rather than easing myself into it. And that triggered off this dormant shoulder injury I'd had since 2017 which now just isn't going away but the good news is that because I'm using a better technique than I did back in 2015 
it's only the shoulder kind of going through the motions of repairing itself last stroke rather than making it worse I hope if you search YouTube for the 2015 40 to 49 lightweight 2k at crash B three two one go Ugh. you will see what I was like back in 2015 I'll try and find the link and post it in the comments or the description not vastly different but you can see a few technique issues that would cause the, the either stress fractures or torn intercostals and like I say they would keep me off the machine for weeks whereas I can still train with my shoulder I just can't train at full pelt two but then not training at full pelt is why I'm here with you we get to train together while I recuperate five four three two one go so we're halfway there I've sped up to 2k plus about 14 see what the actual average by the end of this one minute is because my I'm up at 2k plus 14 now but just because of the lag the way it starts it might not be that is the average yeah maybe close four three two one and make sure if you're going full fill guns on this don't ease up here on the other side of the hill now you're almost done well no, you're not really but hey uh, three two one go you're more done than you were before if you're thinking about technique make sure and switch your focus I know I certainly turned off while I was talking to you about injury prevention for the past six or seven intervals so I'm going to go back to it again powerful back snap into that catch at the front as your feet connect with the foot plate you want your arms to connect with the handle so there's no power leak no butt scoot full power from the start two one really get those heels down onto the foot plate five four three two one go this is one of those times that switching to the force curve on your monitor can really help you see what's going on with your technique I'm going to do that for the next interval you want a nice smooth curve with a sharp incline at the top sharper the incline the more instant and smoothly you're putting the power into it five 
four, three, two, one. Okay, so second button down changes your monitor to the force curve if you're on a concept two. Five, three, two, one, go. So let's see what's going on. Yeah, that's all right. It's a nice sharp line. It's a little bit of a hiccup as I go up the line, which means I'm putting in loads of power. Then it drops away slightly. It goes up sharply and then there's a kink to slightly lower. That's better. And I think that kink is caused by me swinging my back too early. That's better. So if I stay in that forward lean for as long as possible, it's a much smoother rise up rather than going with a wee kink. This is not the kind of kinky that I like. I don't really like any kinky. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go. I was too disgusted by myself there. So I'm trying to concentrate on my back position again, both at the front as I recover and then as I drive out. You certainly see the difference in how sharply the curve rises when I get it right. So if I get, so I'm not over leaning at the front and I connect everything at the right time. One more stroke. If I get it all right, it smoothly goes up really sharply. Whereas if I mess up the pressure from the front, it's a softer curve. Five, four, Three, two, one. <clears throat> That's 20 done, 10 more to go. Now, of course, I always talk about the leg drive <clears throat> and the back. I never really mention the importance of the finish with your arms. It's almost like the way I describe it. The arms are an afterthought. Obviously they're anything but. So it all starts by making sure you have straight arms as you engage the drive. Two, one. So as you connect nice straight arms and hold those straight arms through the drive. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And then as your leg drive finishes, that's when you pull in with your arms. And because your arms are straight through the drive, you have the entire length of your arms to pull in. Whereas if you have bent arms as you start, you've only got a half pull at the end, which isn't going to do much. So Straight arms gives you the full 
finish at the end. Three, two, and by doing the arm pull after the legs, it means you get all the power from your legs, and then you get additional arms at the end. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. And then squeeze those shoulder blades together and pull that handle in to run about your sternum. Use your lats to get the handle in rather than finishing high like this and having to use your forearms and biceps because trust me your lats are bigger and will fatigue slower than your forearms and your biceps and you're still using your forearms and biceps as you pull in to your sternum one stroke so you're still using biceps forearms here whereas up there you're not using your lats five four three two one go and you'll see on the force curve that if you don't have a powerful finish the curve just kind of falls off it's like a very soggy finish it's like a poor ski slope whereas what you want is for the hump at the top of the force curve to be as high and as long as possible and you do that from power from your legs then your back then your arms and that gives you the greatest uh, space under the curve that you can get uh, that's what I want like space I want the curve to go like that which means power uh, no power five four three two one whereas if you have a gentle ski slope finish what that means is that the last part of the power isn't getting in there probably best is to go online and read more about force curves there's certain designs of a for force curve that are predictive of your technique or your even your body style if you have a very powerful upper body with a strong finish so much hang on two one so much more of a kind of N shape than if you have a weaker upper body still finishing strong which can be a bit more tapered three two one go five more intervals to go have a quick think about your compression at the front of the stroke are you taking a full slide and getting your knees kind of almost tucked up into your armpits without your knees opening out so still tucked between your biceps but kind of 
going up towards your armpits. That gives you a good compression at the front, ready to spring out. Two, last stroke. Four to go. Yes, yeah, so you want to be shins vertical and maybe over leaning, but you need good flexibility. I'm not going to discount that. Five, four, three, two, one, go. <clears throat> But you can work on your flexibility but what I'd say is if you don't have a good compression shins vertical at the front work on it don't just settle for half slide because that's all you can manage try to work on managing more which means Trying to slide a little bit further forwards each time you sit down for a session. So, I said before, use a post it note on the rail, that'll help you. Three, two, one. Say you can only slide that far forwards. Place a post-it note there and then move it very slightly forwards, about an inch, and then to hang on five, four, three, two, one. And then with that post-it note slightly further forwards than your current max compression, you try and hit the post-it note. And what will happen is when you get it you'll feel a tiny click through the seat to let you know you managed it doesn't stop you so it's not like putting a exercise band around the rail or anything that would stop the seat you want that sensation of getting into compression naturally and feeling that compression there if you've got a resistance band kicking you backwards you're not going to feel that compression one so every time you go forwards you feel that click and if this was this case you go well I felt it every single stroke then I'm going to move it forwards a tiny bit more see if you can hit it this time three two one go <clears throat> which is a perfect training session for this workout is to try and improve your flexibility with a post-it note because you have 30, 30 times you can go through it and then you keep on resting so if I hit it now I go okay I'm hitting the post-it so when I stop at the end of this interval I'm going to move it further forwards Remember, all you'll feel is a little click. You won't stop. You'll just get that little sensation that you've done it. And then you just keep on moving it further and further forwards until two, until you get. So here we go, that's me kind of the right compression. So I'd put post it there once I got to there, I'd be like, that's as far as I need to go. Then I just leave the post it there and make sure two, one, go. Make sure I always hit it. Now, I seem to believe that this is us on the last interval. How quick was that? Hopefully you're still cracking out a maximum effort or a controlled effort or you're still concentrating on aspects of your technique and my various mutterings were just there to keep you company so remember if you did this as a recovery row today 
you can come back to it tomorrow and up the pace by like five seconds hang on two one get up the pace by five seconds turn it into a mid-tier workout up the pace by another five seconds turn it into a top tier be going for the max effort so this really is a great workout that you can just tailor to how you need it that day fair enough you might want to skip doing it with me because you're going to hear the same thing over and over again but load it up on your monitor stick on some dead mouse or foo fighters and just concentrate on what you're doing that day and always think that this gives you the option to think about your technique all right well, let's get into a two minute cool down three two one go so it's a perfect row for how hard you want to go while also thinking about your technique because it gives you the space in between each interval to think about it so although this might not be as uh, loved as a session like a 30 minutes at R20 because that's just a good solid engine building workout that the 15 second rests in this one probably maybe you don't quite get the same but I'm still felt like I put in just amount just the same amount of effort as I would have if that was a 30 R20 probably because I was gunning it a couple of seconds faster than 2k plus 18 by the end I was up at 2k plus kind of 14 15 so maybe that's how you tailor it if you wish but it's really just a mystery soup this one there we go hashtag mystery soup i knew it would come eventually i've been panicking for the past half hour what's today's hashtag gonna be so yeah mystery soup that's what this one comes out as because you can just put in whatever you want suddenly there's a alphabet spaghetti piece of lamb a haribo who knows so yeah so it's up to you i don't often do rower's choice stuff but this one hopefully I explained enough at the top and through it just to say this is a great session for just putting putting in what you want to get out of it oh, and I think I was kind of bottom tier snuck into mid towards the end there we go two minutes done oh oh and that's it for today thank you so much for joining me for another row make sure and subscribe leave comments smoke signals whatever you want i do love hearing from you all um yeah if you want to check out the website it's rowalong.com um at one point if i actually get my thumb out i'm going to start i'm just going to design t-shirts if you want to see about getting a row along t-shirt who knows someone might um but yes yeah, so rowalong.com for that indoorrowinginfo.com for a website with lots of information about indoor rowing um technique tips uh technique tips teams uh, training plans other than the row along training plan I've got in here and things lots of stuff lots of reasons to go and visit that website and that's it so I'll see you in the next video hope you're all keeping safe and stuff um, it's a little bit warmer today but hey I can just hear a guy with a digger next door so I better stop because all I can hear is brrrr. and if you can hear that too then that's going to get annoying so I'm going to say goodbye thanks again bye bye great day bye bye remember oh oh mystery soup hashtag mystery soup remember that bye